Destiny Preparation Church. Can y'all help me? Put your hands together. Come on. This is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation. Welcome once again to the program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Glad to have you here watching our program and joining in with us. I pray that this will be a blessing to you. I'm always excited and honored when you open your doors, the doors of your home, uh, to, to uh, let us connect up with you. I, I pray that this will be a blessing to you and you'll be able to catch us every week here and be a part of our regular audience here. We, we show several times over the weekend and uh, we, we start here on Saturdays and Sundays, and depending on where you're watching from, uh, either be it in the suburbs or in the city, we air at different times. So you can check out these times and it's either on cable channel 15 or 98.5. We have a box, cable box, it's probably channel 15, um, or the digital channel, 98.5 through Time Warner Cable. Feel free to connect up with us and let somebody else know to join us as well. We depend upon you to help spread the ministry of this program and through the program. We provide the program, you help share, build the audience, all right? God bless, I pray that you'll be a part of that. Listen, you're invited to join us at any of our services that take place here, and we have lots of exciting things that go on. Uh, just had our family and friends weekend last weekend great time thankful for all of you came hopefully you'll come back again and if you missed it last weekend but you'd still like to come listen the doors are still open to come and join us at any of our services we meet here on on sundays and on wednesdays a few other special times as well uh, wednesdays we meet for bible study midweek service takes place starting at 6 30 p.m with prayer followed by our 7 p.m midweek service and so feel free to come all the way to the back side you'll come if you come on wednesdays you probably won't see cars up front you might think nobody's here but we're all on the back side come around the back side and you'll see the cars and come on in the main main hallway there and join us uh, for a midweek service Sundays we take we meet here for Sunday school at 10 a.m. followed by our regular service at 1130 in the morning on Sundays right here in the sanctuary we look forward to having a great great time and look forward to you being here with us this particular sunday uh, is the first sunday of the month and every first sunday after service our young people get together we have a great youth and young adult group uh, uh, from college age to high school age uh, that come and connect up together and even younger and after service they just have a great time of fellowship just about fellowship coming in having some food afterwards having some games having some fun perhaps a little conversation a great time for your young people or for you to come and meet other young people that want to have God in their lives as well and parents let me encourage you there is no better thing you can do for your children than to get them situated in the house of God they need that foundation particularly today of ethics of morals of understanding of knowing that there are other young people out there that do love God and serve God otherwise everything they see points them in the wrong direction and helps them to make wrong decisions if you want your children to come up in a way that they will uh, honor God and have great morals and ethics you need to bring them to the house of God the earlier the better but it's never too late you may have to encourage them a couple times at first hey listen we're going so get up and get dressed but you know what once they come and connect up with others it'll give them some inspiration to want to come as well so I encourage you to make that step in your house to bring your family to the house of God you won't regret it it will be a blessing to you and to your family so we've got our youth day coming up after service today also want to remind you that we're heading into the Easter time and during this time frame uh, there's going to be some great things that will be going on here at the church over the next couple of weeks. We're all the way from uh, Palm Sunday 
through Easter that week. We have special services. We'll tell you more about that next week. So come and join us for that as well. It's going to be a great time here in Easter, in the Easter season. All right, so let me take you into the Word of God now. This is the fourth week of a series that I've been sharing with you about being in the presence of God and preparing to be in the presence of God. And now we're bringing this series to a close, but we're opening the door to something even greater. I want to invite you to come and to uh, share in what's happening in the church as a result of this ministry that we've been sharing. But this part is about entering into his presence. After you've done all the things to prepare, you've destroyed out the things that are the enemies of God in your life, after you have helped create and establish holy ground, after you've built your altar, now it's time to enter into his presence. I pray that this will be a blessing to you and you will follow this. I, I share with the people in the church that these, these sermons in particular, each one has an action associated with it. I pray that you've taken action over these past few weeks and if you haven't, it's not too late. Take action get ready to make some change to see God's presence in your life and to see your atmosphere, your family, uh, your work environment, your, your area of dominion change because God is going to change you as his presence comes in. Come and join us in service in the presence of the Lord here at Destiny Preparation Church. We look forward to being here and connecting up with you in that very soon. Now God bless you. Take this word to heart. Don't forget, come and join us and hopefully I'll meet you here real soon. Having done these things now to prepare, I want to talk about actually entering his presence. To enter his presence, first of all, the first thing that it, uh, is the Bible always shows us is that we must be clean. You cannot enter God's presence unclean. Nothing unclean can enter the presence of of God. God allows nothing impure, nothing unholy before him. Anything that comes before him that is not clean will die. Because he is a pure God and he cannot tolerate. It's not an option. It's not a choice. It's not that he just don't like you today. Amen. It can't happen. Just like light can't mix with day and, and oil can't mix with water, amen, uncleanliness cannot exist before the presence of God. It just can't happen. So anything that enters his presence must first be clean. Men in the old time, in the Old Testament, feared the presence of God. They were afraid of the presence of God. Why? Because they realized in most places that they weren't holy enough, worthy enough to be in the presence of God. Anybody that happened to stumble across, amen, holy ground, as we've described, amen, they weren't just, oh, hey, great, this is holy ground, cool. They were afraid. Oh, my gosh, I think I'm going to die. Because I just walked in the holy ground. I didn't even realize where I was. Moses, amen, was not trained, but when Moses realized he was standing before, he thought he was standing in front of a bush, and he realized God was in the bush, and God told him it was holy ground, amen, he immediately dropped down to his, off of his feet, amen, because he realized to be in the presence of God. You have to understand, we're talking about in Sunday school today, amen, in Old Testament times, when they moved, any time they, they spoke of gods, they spoke of them in fear. Amen. Outside of the God of Jacob and, 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 and Ab Abraham and Isaac. Amen. Gods were to be feared, even in the presence of God. Because if you walked in the presence of a God, gods came to punish you. Gods came to, 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 to pour, put their, their, their curses on you. And the gods that most people serve were gods that they feared. So when the children of Israel learned of this God of heaven, they were fearful of him. That's why when they went to Mount Sinai, when they came out, amen, of, of Egypt and they went to the mountain and they saw the power of God up on the mountain, the Bible says that there was fire and flames sputtering on top of the mountain. There was a cloud on the mountain. There was thunder sounding on the mountain. People weren't excited. They were afraid. They thought they was about to die. We came out of Egypt to come to this mountain and die in the presence of, the, of God. They told, they told literally, Moses said, no, nah, we ain't going before God, you go. 
you going up on the mountain, you find out what he's got to say, and you bring it back, because we're not going up there. Amen? And God had told them, be careful, because if you cross too far and you step onto this ground, amen, you'll die, because why? Because this is holy, pure ground. And if you're not clean, you can't step here. They had a reason to fear. God was pure and holy, and we're not. They feared being in the presence of God. They feared the appearance of angels. Those who saw angels come immediately fell to their run. Oh, God, what are you going to do to me? What, you, what, what did I do wrong? Amen. I'm not taking any chances. I'm, I'm, not, I'm expecting the worst. They were fearful of the God that they served. They served him in fear and honor. Amen. We, we've kind of lost track of the fearfulness of God. Amen. Moses, even after he had followed with God, he had walked with God, he had been in the presence of God, he had been honored enough to be up on the mountaintop. Amen. The Bible says that as their relationship, his relationship with God built and expanded, he wanted to see the face of God. He said, Can I, uh, Lord, I want to see your face. And God explained to him, he says, you know what, I'll let you see my glory, but you can't see my face. It's too pure too holy. You're not there yet. I know you've done sacrifices. I know you've purged yourself. I know you've made yourself clean in every way you can. But the very nature of your flesh is sinful. You can't see my face and live. I'll show you the behind parts of my glory from behind this rock over here. And you'll be able to see my glory as it passes past you. But it's like looking in the sun. You can't look in the sun, amen, without becoming blinded. You can't look on my glory without dying. That's how holy his presence is. And those who entered the presence of God in any aspect had to first be purified. The priests of the Old Testament entered into the Holy of Holies one time per year to make sacrifices for the people of God, to, to give and surrender up sacrifices for them. The first step they, of what they needed to do was purification. They had to be purified of all their sins. They couldn't make sacrifices for others until they were first purified for themselves. So they had to go to the altar and make sacrifices. God, I forgive me. Everything, everything I did, every thought that I had, every wrong step that I took, I think I might have stepped on the wrong side of the road one day and there was a, something dead over there and it might have made me impure. So I'm giving a sacrifice in case I, in case I made that mistake. And Lord, if, if I had a thought that, I, that was out of line, God, I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but you know, I want to be forgiven of it anyway because I can't take any chances going up before God and having something still sitting on me that's not right. right. They purified themselves and then they were able to go in to make sacrifices for the purification of the people. The Bible tells a story that in, in case they messed up, they had a rope that was wrapped around them. And, and when they went into the Holy of Holies, they, not only did they have ropes, but they had bells yes. on the bottom of their, 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 their garments. Yes, sir. And, and, and the rest of the priests that weren't quite as holy, weren't quite as prepared, stayed on the outside. And, and they listened for the bells to keep yes. ringing. And, and as long as they heard the bells, they knew he was still okay. Yes. If they heard the bells stop ringing, they, oh, he forgot one. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. And they used the rope because they couldn't go in and get him. They had to drag his dead body back out of, the, out of the presence of God. That sounds kind of serious, huh? Holiness without, the Bible says, no man shall see the Lord. Amen. So they had to purify themselves to become an intercessor for the sins of the rest of the people. That's what it took to be in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah spoke of his vision before the Lord. And there were others that were in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah, in the Old Testament, spoke of his vision of going up and being in the presence of God. And as God began to speak, the voice of God began to sound, even in the vision, he realized, I'm not even worthy, I'm not holy. Who am I to be in the presence of God? He says, woe am I. Amen, that a man, a man, I should be in the presence of God said, I'm unworthy and I'm undone. In other words, I'm exposed. Everything inside of me that isn't right. I thought I was doing pretty good until I stepped into the presence of God. And even in the vision of being in the presence of God, 
His unworthiness, his unholiness, his impurity, amen, cause him to feel condemned. The Bible says that, 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 that an angel took a tongue, amen, a, 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 a coal off of the fire before God and put it, placed it on his tongue. Why? To purge him so that he would be able to operate in the presence of the Lord. We have to first and foremost be cleansed before we can enter the presence of God. How many of you ready to go? Maybe kind of, I hope, I'd like to, amen? Let me just double check. <laughs> you, ready to bet? you ready to bet everything on that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He who hath the first hath, hath no sin cast the first stone, right? Well, I'll tell you what, we have an answer. We have hope. Because we have Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ became to be the ultimate intercessor and sacrifice for all. Because, you know, trying to get everything right. Mm. <laughs> Some of us have a good day. Some of us might even have a good moment. I feel pretty okay right about now. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm worshiping and I, I'm ready. And I've let her, I think I let everything else go except for this one little thing back here that's trying to still mess with me a little bit. Praise God. I, I think hopefully I'm almost all right. Amen. But thank God that Jesus has done the work that we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27, I'll read for you from the New Living Translation. It says, Hebrews 7 and 27, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day, speaking of Christ, like the other high priests. They did this for their own sins first, as I was describing to you, and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once for all when he sacrificed himself on the cross. Jesus made a sacrifice for us that was permanent and complete. So that sins, past, present, and future, would already be covered to set us free from the guilt and from the enslavement of sin. Jesus made us perfect even though we're not perfect. Do I need to say that one again? <laughs> Jesus made us perfect, even though, y'all know we're not perfect. Amen? We're a work in progress. Somebody say, I'm a work in progress. Amen? Every day I'm trying to get it right. Every day I'm trying to straighten out something else. Every day I'm trying to clean up another thought. Every day I'm trying to let go of something else that I know is not right and God told me I shouldn't be doing. We're a work in progress, but Jesus made a sacrifice that covered every one of our sin. Not, by the way, so we could continue in our sin. Not to make excuse for the things that we're doing. But to set us at liberty, to set us free from the things that we're doing. In other words, we're not supposed to be continuing, we're supposed to be improving. Amen? Thanks to the blood of, God, of Jesus, the things that we have done, the things that we do, God does not hold us accountable, amen, to an ultimate price of sacrifice because the sacrifice has, ever met, has already been made. But that doesn't mean he not, can now accept you and will not accept you with all your sins still wrapped up and tied up on you. It doesn't mean now you can come to God, amen, before his holiness, before his presence, carrying all the things that linger on you. You still got to get cleaned up. Look at somebody, look at somebody tell them you still got to get cleaned up. Amen? But because of Christ, we have an entryway, we have an access way into the presence of God. Because of what Christ did, it's made a difference. There's a difference. You see, the Bible talks about Old Testament and New Testament. We, 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 we call it that, amen, but the Bible talks about as well the Old Testament is the commitment, it's the agreement by which they were saved before Christ. There's a New Testament that comes in through Christ. So whereas before their entryway was only through one man who once a year had to make himself pure enough to go before Christ to sacrifice for others. In the New Testament, we've already been clarified through Christ. And he's made a way not only for him to go for us, but for us to be able to pass through to God, amen, directly for ourselves. 
was sharing with you earlier this week, amen, in Bible study, amen, that God has always had the intent of being with his people, connected with his people. From Genesis all the way through Revelation, the story is about getting back to that state where God can be with his people, amen. Constantly, he's made the attempt to be with his people. And this attempt through Christ was the ultimate and fin finishing point of that phase of getting back. Because Christ's intent was not just to cleanse us, but it was to give us a way back to God, a way back to his presence, a way back to where we could stand before him once again. Adam and Eve stood before God. Why? Because there was no sin in them. There was nothing to separate them. So Adam and Eve could stand before the very presence of God until sin came into their life. And then they could no longer be in his presence. Then they had to get out of the garden. Jesus came to give us a way back into the presence of God by paying the price and covering the guilt of our sins, by cleansing us to the point where we then could be reconnected back to God. In 1 Peter 3 and 18, the NIV says, for Christ died for sins once for all. The righteousness of, for the unrighteous to bring you to God, to bring you to God, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Why? To bring you to God. That's why he came. That's why he died. That's why he became the perfect sacrifice. Why? So you again could be connected back to God. That's why in the New Testament era, the Holy Spirit can now live inside of us. You realize in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit inside. They had no access. They had no way of doing that. Why? Because there was constant sin in them blocking the pathway of the Holy Spirit. God couldn't live in an unholy vessel. So sin was a blocking point to God being connected to us. Why is it that now, after Christ's death, now we can have the Spirit of God living inside of us? Is the Holy Spirit less pure than God? No. It's the same God. Why is it that God is now able? By the way, he promised he was going to do it. Amen. But why is he now able to live inside of us if we're still struggling with our sins? Because Jesus Christ purified us to the point where the sins that are inside of us are covered by the blood. And because they're covered by the blood, God can stand in our midst. God can move in our midst. God can, we can connect up with God again. We can get back into the presence of God because the blood of Jesus is covering our sins. You better make sure, by the way, that your sins are covered. Amen? Because if they're not covered... <laughs> You, you, you don't want to be in God's presence. It's not going to happen. Amen? The work is already done. God promised us, amen, that he was going to come and he was going to do this. He was going to fulfill this. He was going to bring his spirit into us. In Joel, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. In Jeremiah, he said that I'm going to take those things that were written on stones and I'm going to write them in your heart. He promised he was coming. He was making a way the whole time. He was doing everything that needed to be done in order to prepare the way to get back into his presence. Now the access key to getting back, the access key, how do we get back in the presence of God? Once we're clean, once we're purged, lies within our worship and our praise. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so vital. That's why we emphasize it so much to you. Because your access key to the presence of God, once you have been purified, once you have been made holy, once you have been cleansed, your access point is your worship and your praise. Psalms 104, 100, verse 4, Psalms 100, verse 4, says, this great key, this great mystery, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. This is the key because God tells us he enables us to enter. It's not about him coming to us now. It's about us entering into his presence, his gates, his courts. 
You have the ability to enter into the presence of God. How do you get there? The secret is through your thanksgiving. It's through your praise. It's through what your, the opening of your heart to God that you allow an entryway into the presence of God. The Bible says in the New Testament, it correlates with that John 4. Jesus told the Samaritan woman in verse 23, he says, you worship in verse 22, he says, you worship because, but you don't really know what you're worshiping. You're, you're seeking God, but you really don't understand what you're seeking. She's asking questions about which way should we worship. So we point this direction, we point to the north, we point to Jerusalem. How do we worship God? He says, you're worshiping, you don't know what you're worshiping. A lot of times we worship and we don't even know why. Raise your hand. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Give God a praise. We worship. We don't know why, but we do it. He says this in verse 23. He says, but the time is coming and is already here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. He said, you're worshiping, but you don't really know why. But he said, and he said that the Jews, they worship because, and they know, they know about God. Amen, because salvation is through the Jews. But then he goes on to this third phase. Get it again. Samaritans worshiping, you're worshiping, you're doing the right things, you're going through all the motions, but you don't really know why you're doing it. Yep. Phase two, Jews, you're worshiping because you know God. God is, 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 is for you. But three is another level. I want you to understand, it's another level. He says, but the time is coming and is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. This program is being provided by Destiny Preparation Church. We'd like to invite you to join us in any of our services. If you're looking to better understand God's purpose for your life, if you'd like to experience the true presence of God, or you're in need of a church home, join us at Destiny Preparation Church. For more information about our services, ministry, or church family, See our website at destinypreparation.org or call 720-5426. Join us on the road to your destiny.